So don't get any better than this. A perfect day at Soldier Field as the Bears have come home to play the Indianapolis Colts. The big ball yard on Lake Michigan sold out again. Now watch the hottest team in pro football. Right now, there are seven playoff contenders in the National Football Conference. The Chicago Bears are, of course, locked in with their 12 and 1 mark. Those other six teams compete for the other four spots. The Bears will be on the home field right through the playoffs up to the Super Bowl, which you'll see here on NBC Sports. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with Bob Crumpy on a great December day in Chicago. Now that the Miami Dolphins have rudely interrupted the dream season of the Chicago Bears, we find out today if the Bears can get rolling again and start dominating again. They're optimistic they can, Trump, particularly with Jim McMahon ready to start again at quarterback. Don, as a starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears, McMahon record 24-4. and And, of course, he's, he's kind of the nerve center of the Chicago Bears offense. Uh, he dresses like a quarterback, wears a quarterback's number, but he, he acts like a linebacker. He headbutts people, and the Bears are undefeated here on Soldier Field in 1985. The Indianapolis Colts have won only three games, but their coach, Ron Dauhauer, says of his young ball club, we're not intimidated by anybody. They look on this as their Super Bowl. They've been waiting to play the Bears, and they've got a couple of darn good runners, although they don't get a lot of press. Yeah, Colts try to control the line of scrimmage offensively, and they do with great running backs. No question about it. McMillan and Wansley, the team averages 4.7 yards a carry. That ties them with the Chicago Bears for second best in the NFL. And you'll note, throughout the day, they will run to the left. Chris Hinton is the left tackle. Ben Hutt, the left guard. That's where they like to run it. There's the man who runs the offense and the team. His first year as head coach, Rod Dahauer, very popular with his players. He, of course, was one of the most celebrated offensive coordinators in the National Football League, most recently with the St. Louis Cardinals before joining the Colts. Last week against a tough New England defense, Indianapolis put up 31 points, but it wasn't enough as the Colts lost 38 to 31. Across the way, a very intense head man for the Chicago Bears who played on their last championship team. He was an all-pro tight end in 63 when the Bears last won. Now he's the head coach of a team that many favor to win Super Bowl 20 coming up in January. But today the Bears want to get back momentum. Chicago to your right will pick it up. Kevin Butler moves into the ball and drills it downfield. Taken back inside the five and now they're going to run it back out to about the 20 yard line and the Colts will go first and 10 from there. Coming back was Oliver Williams running the ball back. And so it's out to the 20 yard line and first and 10 there for the Colts with Mike Pagel at quarterback. Randy McMillan and George Wansley, the two good runners for Indianapolis, a team that averages almost five yards a rush. Cold offense is picked up with the return of wide receiver Matt Fuza. The best offensive lineman from nearby Northwestern is Chris Hinton, number 75. The Colts will run left a lot behind him. Donaldson will stand out at center. Just across the 20 to have the ball position. First and 10 now for Indianapolis. Mike Pagel goes to the run, and Randy McMillan takes it out to the 30. Very close to a 10-yard gain. He'll be just short of a first down. The number one defense in the National Football League is that of the Chicago Bears, with Hampton, McMichael, rookie William Perry, and sacker Richard Dent across the front. Linebackers big and very fast in Otis Wilson, Mike Singletary, and Wilbur Marshall. Secondary, beat around Gary Fensick, the veteran free safety. Now dropping to throw on second and one. The ball is tipped and it'll go incomplete. Mike Pagel working hard to get at the free ball as it was up for grabs. McMichael got a hand down it. He's having a terrific season for the Bears. Donna, comment. You mentioned the intensity of one Mike Ditka, the head coach of the Chicago Bears. Last time these two teams met, the Colts beat the Bears. Mike Ditka broke his hand. And it's been seven games since the Chicago Bears beat the Colts both at Indianapolis and Baltimore. Ditka said nobody's perfect. And we proved that against Miami. Now let's see what we do the rest of the way. He said we're going to get it right back to where it was. Hope so. Moving early. Here's another run. This is going to be good for a first down and more. Powerful George Wansley breaks into open field. It's a foot race now. Dorson gets him, but not till he gets down to the 30-yard line. The Chicago Bears, so Wansley, who seemingly was down when he turned the corner, with excellent balance, gets ahead for a 32-yard gain. One of the interesting things about George Wansley, his hero, is none other than Walter Payton. This is a good trap block up front. You can even see Randy McMillan making a good play, a good lead block. But I think uh, George Wansley wants to show off to Walter Payton, and of course he wears his number. 
talking to the co coaches from before the game, they said building something early is very important. Colts want to build momentum as the game gets on. They don't want to fall behind early. Then they might be gone. They can stay with the Bears for a while. They could get better. Now they go to the run again, but this time Chicago shuts it down. Dorison came up, a strong safety. He made a hit. On your point, it's well taken about points early or positive things early for the Colts. This team is three and ten. They're not going to the playoffs. Some of these guys are playing for new contracts. Very difficult for a coaching staff to get a team up when they're three and ten and going nowhere. It's equally as difficult to get a team that's going to the playoffs and has got two more weeks to wait before they start in the Chicago Bears. Uh, Dahauer checking the play sheet. He had a like the one that Wamsley ripped off for the biggest gain of this season for Indianapolis. Hagel climbing pattern has a tight end. Moving out with the ball is Pat Beach and he's down to the 25 yard line. On a second and 10 play Pat Beach gets ahead for very close to a first down. He'll be just short of it. Cornerback Leslie Frazier knocked him out of bounds for Chicago. I think we better get used to that today. Very short drops by the quarterback. That's something that Dan Marino last week did for Miami and got the job done. I'd be very surprised to see the Indianapolis Colts set up and really go deep on a very consistent basis. Third down and less than a yard now for Indianapolis. The ball just inside the Chicago 25 yard line. I set in the backfield. Deep back is Wansley. He gets the ball. Going behind Hinton and up. Wansley is inside the 25 and has a first down for Indianapolis. Dan Hampton knocked him down, but the Colts moving right along. 4.7 yards a rush this Indianapolis Colts team uh, averages per game. And when they need tough yardage, they go right behind the graduate of Northwestern, Chris Hinton. He was a pro bowler at guard. And he's out. He can fire out. He's trying to get a shot on Singletary. Singletary kind of gets the best of him there. Samurai Warriors, Singletary is called here in Chicago. The hub of the defense, Mike Singletary in his fifth year from Baylor. He's a leading rushing team. We have two of them match today. First down and ten Indianapolis. There's no score in the first quarter. He goes looking at papers, guns to him on the run, and he loses the ball at the eight-yard line. Excellent throw by Mike Pagel off the rollout right on the hands of Papers, but Fensick was there also. It really was an eminently catchable ball. Sure was. Little slant pass, and I think what happened, Capers looks back and doesn't recognize where the quarterback is, but Fensick knows where his chin is, doesn't he? That was a big hit, and that's one thing this Chicago Bear defense has had throughout its history. Great hitters on their defense. Fensick is one of those. Eighth play of the drive coming up now. Second down and ten, Indianapolis. Randy McMillan breaks the crust for the moment, gets inside the 20-yard line. William Perry, who did not have a tackle against the Dolphins, made that one. Hinton, once again, was the key blocker at offensive left tackle. He's kind of screening off linebackers. Watch the reach out by William Perry. He got handled last week by Stevenson, the center of Miami. He's got another tough center today in Ray Donaldson. Third down now for Indianapolis. Third and six. Loop pro. Albert Bentley has it. And he's got a first down and very nearly six as he's down to the three-yard line. So another good throw by Mike Pagel, and all of a sudden the Colts, who in the local papers were a 20-point underdog coming in, are challenging for the first score of the game. 16 point 16 yard pickup. This is well thrown by Pagel. You can see the linebacker in coverage, Wilson. Finley just rushes right by him. Good time. Another three-step drop. Colts being very conservative here. Not really subjecting their quarterback to that fierce Chicago pass rush. Mike Cagle, as you know, Trump, a very dangerous runner. The Indianapolis quarterback. First down and goal. Here's Cagle on the spread out. Guns it down to the one-yard line. Tight end Mark Boyer got it. Rookie from Southern California, Wilbur Marshall was with him, but now with three downs, the Colts are at point blank range. Bengals, your old club, Trump, with a two pointer, a safety. Well, you got to get it somehow. You might as well get it with a safety. Get the ball back shortly and a free kick. Mike Pagel's put the ball up five times now, has completed three for 27 yards. 
It's second down and goal for Indianapolis at the one-yard line of Chicago. They weren't expecting this at Soldier Field. 12-1 Bears, a prohibitive favorite, trying to hold the Colts out of the end zone. Wansley didn't get there. George Wansley ran into Otis Wilson. And so it'll be third and goal now for Indianapolis. Down here against a defense that is so active like the Chicago Bears, you really don't have a good choice, Don. You, you can't run at them because they have such great size up the middle, and they're, they're so quick, they're very difficult to run around. And I think this is two-down area for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, they set up with Randy McMillan, a line behind his quarterback. He gets a pitch back, and McMillan's going to be knocked down for a loss on a Pro Bowl play by free safety Gary Fensick. So Chicago delivers some big hits at the goal line and keeps the Colts out. Now Indianapolis sends out its field goal unit with Raul Allegre ready to try for three. A lot of people would question a call like that running wide. Shortest distance between two points a straight line. You can see the fence is there to support right at the outset. And that's the respect I think Indianapolis has for the Chicago Bear defensive front five or six. Ron Stark is the holder. Allegri very accurate and close. He's had some trouble with his long distance hits this year. Here's the field goal try up. Hits the upright. It's no good. So a major disappointment for this young Indianapolis team as they take the ball right through the Chicago Bears, get down close, can't get it in, and then blow a point-blank field goal. It's nothing-nothing when we come back. 72-yard drive. You can't really see his left foot. But generally, when a kicker misses one like that, his foot has turned out. Just the second miss of the season for Raul Allegri inside the 40-yard line, Don. Heartbreaker for the Colts as they went 72 yards and 13 plays came away empty. And they had a second and goal at the one, you remember. Now the Bears get their first crack at it on offense with Jim McMahon back at quarterback to start the game. Aiden and Suey are his runners. Walter Payton. Danell Thompson, number 99, came up. Johnny Cooks was with him, a linebacker, and there's very little gain on the play for Chicago. Bears with McMahon, Peyton and Suey in the backfield, super fast Willie Galt and Ken Marjoram are the wide receivers. Emery Moorhead, the tight end. Offensive line, Bear coaches say there's no tackle in the league playing better than Covert at the left side. Kilgenberg having a big uh, year at center for Chicago. Chicago Bears start more number one draft choices than any, one, any team in the National Football League. They start nine. On offense and defense. A total of nine. Gain of just two by Peyton, so it's second down and eight. Draw to Walter Peyton, who's been hobbled with a bad foot flu this week. Didn't work out early in the week, but they say he's up to speed. Now on two carries, he doesn't get much, although he's gotten a ton so far this year, over 1,300 yards. Danielle Thompson was the number one. Defensive left end, Brad White and Chris Scott in the front three with him. Linebackers, the strength of the Indianapolis defense. Cooks, Kraus, and Bickett, all high number one draft choices. Cliff Odom might be the best of the lot. Secondary's young. Eugene Daniel, one of the corners on the right side, has six interceptions this year. Third down and a long six for Chicago. Jim McMahon's going to take it himself. There's a penalty marker down, however. As McMahon has an open sack, he's across the 40 and out to the 45-yard line. See if there was a holding call, though, against Chicago on the play. The penalty marker was down in the Bears' backfield. A 21-yard run by Jim McMahon, who is a standout runner. Averages over five yards a run. And holding is the signal, so Trump it all comes back. Yeah, interesting about Walter Payton. He is the NFL's leading rusher, but the Colts historically have done an outstanding job Offense, against him. Number 62. That's Mark on Bortz. Mark Bortz to tackle. Watch the left side. Mark Bortz number 62. A lot of times it's not really grabbing. It's just the position of the hands. As he moves out of the picture, you can't really see it. But to continue my thought on Walter Pitt against the Colts are just unbelievable. 11 carries, four yards coming into this game. So now after the 21-yard run by the quarterback is negated, third down and about 17. Colts might have left 
Sturley, a quick pitch up the middle. Dennis Gentry runs with the ball and very well as he's into open field and Gentry's out to the 44-yard line. Now we got two flags. One at the line of scrimmage, one in the offensive backfield again. 30-yard runs. So the Bears have ripped off 51 yards on consecutive runs, but this one looks to be coming back. There's no question that Indianapolis was offside. But the other flag in the offensive backfield may be a late hit on the quarterback, even though that is considered a pass. Number 50, defense was offside. Number 50, roughing the quarterback. Also, 15-yard penalty, and that's a first down. Uh, Don, the interesting thing about that is even though it's a shovel pass, he is still under the protection of a quarterback. So you can't late hit him. Even though he rolled out a little bit, Dwayne Bickett put a, uh, a shot on Jim McMahon, tossed him an extra 15 yards. Watch what happens. And there's the flag. And that's a big play. 30, 31 yards on the run, 15 yards on the penalty, just 46 yards. Watch again. Kind of a shove, not really a hit, but nevertheless, the quarterback is still afforded protection on that play. New England Patriots, very much a playoff contender in the American Conference, going in with a 9-4 record of taking a 7-0 read on a Tony Easton run for a touchdown. To the other scores, Cincinnati now putting a touchdown up to extend its lead over Dallas. First and 10 for the Chicago Bears. First quarter and no score as Matt Suey runs the ball down to the 38-yard line. He joined us late. The Indianapolis Colts took the opening kickoff. Marched 72 yards and 13 plays. We're right down at the Chicago goal line. Couldn't get it in. Tried a field goal from about 22 yards out. And it hit the upright and was no good. So they went all the way down for naught. Chicago took over the ball. And now after a run and a subsequent penalty tack down, the Bears get a 46-yard gainer. And they're on the Colts side of the field for the first time in the game. Six minutes and 34 seconds to play in the first quarter. Peyton waits for the blocking to develop and he runs it down to the 35 yard line of Indianapolis. Second down and seven carry. There is a player missing from the lineup for the Chicago Bears. Dennis McKinnon is out with the pulled hamstring. Ken Marjoram is his replacement. Interesting thing I like about this time. Walter Payton has never had a Pro Bowl offensive lineman in front of him. Never. This year he's probably going to have two. Hilkenberg and Colbert. But he's got an awful lot of yards by himself. Gained over 1,300 yards coming into this game this season. 5.2 yards per carry average. Leads the team in receptions with 42 does Walter Payton. Pitch back to Suey. He's caught from behind. A fine defensive play. Dwayne Bickett misfired earlier. Makes the stop. The number one draft choice from Southern California. The Bear coaches looking at him on film. So this guy's going to be a real force. Oh, yeah. He is already. Came on a blitz there. Walter Payton was the lead blocker. And Bickett just uh, kind of crushed Walter Payton and made the tackle. So now the Bears drive stalls, and they're going to punt the ball downfield as Robbie Martin goes back for Indianapolis. A great day in Chicago. 45 years ago today, the Bears scored their 73 to nothing championship game win. Many of those Bears from that great team are here today. Chicago's not won the NFL title since 63. Robbie Martin, the punt returner for Indianapolis. Too much time. The 30 second clock has expired and no real damage to the Chicago Bears. Mike Dickey with his quarterback Jim McMahon. Delay the game. Offense. So they'll punt from a little farther back the line of scrimmage now the 43 yard line. McMahon was banged up in the win over Green Bay here at Soldier Field on November 3rd. Steve Fuller played the next three games. Of course, McMahon came in when Fuller was hurt against Miami on Monday night. Jim McMahon with an 89 quarterback rating. Robbie Martin, as you see, can break the long one. Has a 70-yard return for a touchdown this season. Maury Buford hits a line drive that's going to carry into the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20, and Indianapolis will start again after driving all the way down to the Chicago goal line in his first possession. 43-yard punt. We'll be back with the Colts with the ball and still no score. Late 60s and early 70s, Joe Namath started wearing white shoes and all the high school kids in the country did the same. I wonder how many high school kids are now wearing headbands. 
Well, you can do it if you're a good quarterback. It's like swimmers with shaved heads. They're going to be good swimmers. True. You're right. First down and 10 now for the Colts. Nothing, nothing game. First quarter at Soldier Field. On to be with Bob Fumpy. Millen looks for room, and the Bears don't give him any. Big Dan Hampton made the knockdown, so it's going to be second down and long. More scores. Cincinnati Whoa. stunning the Cowboys 16 to nothing. Zayason just threw to Eddie Brown for 15 yards and a touchdown. St. Louis up on New Orleans 7 0 first quarter score. Stump Mitchell ran it in for the Cardinals from five yards out. Here at Soldier Field on a mild December day, the Colts and the Bears are scoreless. Chicago coming in in some estimates a three touchdown favorite. Think about the Colts, they're young, they don't have a great record, but they don't quit. Here's a hard throw to Capers again at the 30. Covering on the play was Mike Richardson. So it brings up third down and long for Indianapolis. Both staying with that three-step drop, running the slants that you and I saw and everybody else in the country saw in Miami last week. Watch the quarterback. One, two, three, set up. Just a five-yard pattern. And the defensive back, Richardson, right there at the point of reception. Colts doing well on third down conversions. They had three or four conversions in that first drive that came up empty, though. No score on the board. High snap, Hagel, good athletic ability, fields the ball, gets it out to Oliver Williams, and he's out for a first down if the play goes. Williams from Illinois is out to the 32-yard line, a gain of 10. And you put your finger right on it. That was a great athletic job by Pagel. That ball was snapped very high by Donaldson. He had to tip it around to uh, keep it in his possession, but I do believe Colts have a choice. Take the penalty or the yards, and I'm sure they'll take the yards. Defense was offside. Decline a penalty. Take the gain. First down. Pagel's been sharp in recent games, Trump, and he certainly has been today. Well, that, that's a great play on his part. I mean, he, he turns a a real disaster into a positive here and still comes up with a completion. Ten yards. First down Colts. We'll see if the Colts can rebound from that opening drive disappointment when they got right down to the Chicago goal line and came away with no points. Field goal try hit the uprights and they didn't score. Hagel looking deep on first and ten. Capers trying to run under it. He is out there and the ball is almost picked up. Leslie Frazier looking for his seventh interception. Had both hands on the ball, and as you saw, lost it. So it's a long out. It'll be second down and 10. One of the problems you face when you play the Chicago Bears, no matter who you are, is you never know when they're going to blitz or fall back in coverage. This time, everyone's back there in coverage. This ball well thrown by Pagel. Capers just couldn't quite get a hold of it. Pagel now 4 of 8 for 37 yards. Probably going for his ninth throw here. Second down and 10 coming up. Watch for the blitz here, Don. Look at him at the line of scrimmage there. Their defense keyed the blitz at any time. They go to the run to offset it, and Randy McMillan takes on tacklers out to the 38-yard line. That brings up third down. Singletary knocked him down for Chicago. Offense is when you face any defense that at the last second jumps around, really has problems identifying people and making the proper calls at the line of scrimmage. The fridge moves a little bit. Double team, well done. No problem whatsoever between Ut and Donaldson. Good pickup. Bridge has got to play better. Better. He's a lot better off the field than he is on the field and now on the sideline. Third down and almost five. A long four. Blocking is good. Hagel gets it away and Boozer drops a hard throw at the 49-yard line. He was wide open, would be still running. Now while we have a moment, let's go to Ahmad Rashad at NFL 85. Ahmad. All right, Don, in Green Bay, you fans will probably remember Dan Marino. The cold hasn't bothered him. He hits Tony Nathanson on a 10-yard touchdown. They mixed the, they missed the extra point. The score is 6-3 in the first quarter. Thank you, Ahmad. So the Dolphins go from 80-degree temperature to the freezing northern Wisconsin and doing all right so far, leading 6-3 over the Packers. There's no score here. Keith Ortego is back deep now for Chicago, a rookie punt returner. Tremendous hit by Ron Stark. Down to the 10-yard line. Ortego hemmed and knocked down at the 20. So Chicago goes on offense again. Leonard Coleman was down to play, make the play for Indianapolis after a 52-yard punt by Ron Stark and a 10-yard return. 
We'll be back to Soldier Field after this. We have 2.30 to play in the first quarter. This is Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy at Sold Out Soldier Field in Chicago. The sudden stop of that flow of superlatives this week for the Chicago Bears. Now they're looking to get back on track and start rolling again. They have not done so so far in this game. It's a nothing-nothing score. Indianapolis and Chicago. McMahon, a quick out. Going for the ball was Marjoram. It'll be second down and ten. The coaches, Trump, were saying, the Bear coaches, it was really kind of nice coming back to Miami. You could get your parking place in the... You didn't have to step over cameramen in the training room. Yeah, this team has certainly got an awful lot of attention in 1985, but if they have a consistent problem, Don, it's scoring in the first quarter. They're 12-1 and one and have scored 61 points and allowed 44. The Colts are 3-10, and 10 and they've scored 51 points and allowed 74. Right now, none at all up. As Jim McMahon takes a deep drop and goes to Emory Moorhead with a fine play out to the 44-yard line of Chicago. Do the Bears hit a big play, get a 24-yard gain and a first down. Rookie Anthony Young made the tackle, but Emory Moorhead makes the big play for Chicago. Last week against the Miami Dolphins, Moorhead was a big receiver for Jim McMahon and Steve Fuller. This is an outstanding catch. Running full speed, stretches his arms up. That was really nice. Cliff Odom, it looked like, had him in coverage, and then I think it was Anthony, Anthony Young who finally made the hit. Linebacker coverage on the tight end. Jim McMahon has now completed two of three for 54 yards for the Bears. Looking for another long ball. He's going to Willie Gull. Incomplete at the 13-yard line. Close. Probably the toughest ball to catch. Straight over the head of the receiver. So many guys get the label world-class speed, and really if a guy just ran college track, they seem to call him world-class nowadays. Willie Galt's the real thing. Uh, no question about it. That guy can get, outrun anybody that you can put a football uniform on, but he can also catch it, too. He, he'll run the short patterns. He's also returned to kickoff, I believe, for 99 yards and a touchdown. Did that against the Redskins. When the Bears were down 10-0, and they went on to rough. Washington. Now it's second down and 10 for Jim McMahon and the Bears as Marjoram goes in motion. Open man is Walter Payton. He has a first down to the 42-yard line of Indianapolis. Nate Randall knocked him down. McMahon looking real sharp. That was good for 14 yards. Well, you can see what this best rushing team in the NFL does to the linebackers of the Colts. Just freezes them at the line of scrimmage until McMahon McMahon passes uh, all those running backs. Peyton, not only leading rusher in the NFL, the Chicago Bears all-time leading receiver. How about that? And the leading receiver this season. That was his 30, 43rd catch of the year. There's going from the eye on first down. Walter Payton takes on tacklers again and gets to the 35-yard line of the Colts. A gain of about seven yards on the play. Cliff Odom, leading tackler for the Colts, knocked him down. This guy's a player. Cliff Odom, in nine of the 13 games that the Colts have played, has had more than 10 tackles. 16 last week against the Patriots, as you see there. This guy is a player and is the only non-first-round draft choice of their four linebackers. He was originally drafted in the third round by Cleveland, was waived. The Raiders picked him up. Colts actually got him as a free agent. Not just their leading tackler, he's their leader. On the field and off. Cliff Odin, always intense. He's going to make the big hit. Because right now, Jim McMahon on a quick timing pad and hits it out to Willie Galt. He turns up for a first down for Chicago. Inside the 30-yard line of Indianapolis, Preston Davis made the knockdown. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. After the first 15 minutes, we see the Bears driving, but still no score up. We've been waiting a long time, though, for a championship team in Chicago, not since 1963. Chicago Bears, right now, at their 12-1 record, looking to get back on track after the upset loss at Miami. Dolphin offense really shocked the Chicago defense, which had been just about impenetrable. So the Dolphins scored on their first five possessions Monday night and filled up a 31 to 10 halftime lead. There's a psychological pickup for the Colts, wouldn't you agree? 
No question. The Colts not allowing a touchdown in the first quarter. That's been a problem for them. Right now, though, as we open the second quarter, McMahon and the Bears are driving first down and 10. 28-yard line of Indianapolis. Walter Payton gets a nice block from Bortz. And then a good defensive play by Indianapolis. Coming across to make the play was Eugene Daniel. Oh, Bengals laying waste to the Cowboys at Cincinnati. It's 22 to nothing. James Brooks just ran 27 yards for a Bengal touchdown. My goodness gracious. <laughs> you weren't ready for that. No, neither were the Dallas Cowboys. First time Dallas has ever played in Cincinnati. You think it was the first professional football game ever played there. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. Second down, a long eight for Jim McMahon and the Bears. Margin in the end zone, and he is screened away from the ball by linebacker Barry Krause, who claims he was impeded, but it had interception. I think he's right, although Marjoram had a clean play on the ball and Krause just happened to be there. I tend to agree with Barry Krause. Marjoram crawled right up his back. And of course, now with the new incidental contact rule, maybe that's why they didn't throw the flag because Krause was not looking back for the football. Marjoram didn't get the ball, but he gets in at Krause's face mask. Yes, he did. So the Bears come up with third down and eight. Ball positioned at the 26-yard line of Indianapolis. We're early in the second quarter, and there's no score. Man's got an open track. 15. Sliding to a halt at the 12-yard line. He has a first down for Chicago, a 15-yard run by Jim McMahon. Anthony Young on the tackle, and that's one of the few times you see Jim McMahon slide in there. He normally likes to take people on. There isn't a defense in the world that accounts for the quarterback running the ball. And you can see the big spot he's got there. Well done by the Chicago Bears. And the Colts are going to have to keep somebody at home to watch that. Coverage has been good, but they have left that open middle, that middle wide open for Jim McMahon. Quarterback who's undergone two knee operations, so they don't like him running, but that time he had no alternative, and he turned in a first down run. Suey right down to the nine-yard line. Jim McMahon said the other day, Trump being the backup quarterback to me has got to be the best backup job in the NFL because a lot of time I spend down, you get to play as much as I do. Yeah, he has certainly been hurt. Last year, his injuries were serious. Had a broken hand, had a lacerated kidney. And there's Steve Fuller on the sideline right now. He's with a uh, bad ankle and a bad knee. I like to think about McMahon. He said, I've had my picture on the cover of Sports Illustrated, Sport Magazine. I would love to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. Probably get there. Yes. If Perry doesn't get there first. Right now, it's second down for Chicago. As you see, the ball positioned at the Colt 10. There's no score in the second quarter. Marjoram ran an in pattern, and the ball, as you saw, went out. Eugene Daniels, nearest man to it. Lions up with a field goal by Eddie Murray, and they now trail the Patriots 7 to 3. Washington, Philadelphia scoreless in the first quarter at Veterans Stadium. Miami holding to a 6 to 3 lead over the Packers at Green Bay. Jets in Buffalo, nothing, nothing in the second quarter. And the big surprise of the day, the Cincinnati Bengals routing the Cowboys 22 to nothing in the first quarter. Don, this is the 12th play of this drive for the Chicago Bears. Very impressive. Third down play coming up. McMahon, four of eight for 82 yards. Free play. Dennis Gentry turning up field. Good defensive hits, but there is a marker down as Gentry is knocked down at about the eight-yard line. Looked like he had room to run, and then he was cut down. Keith Lee came up along with Anthony Young. McMahon's doing an excellent job of drawing the Colts offside. You can hear from our sideline microphone the different inflection in his voice. They go from baritone to tenor, from hut to hut. Defense offside, number 99. Five yards, third down. Didn't get him the first down, but it gets him close. Third down again. 
one of the aspects of Walter Payton's game that nobody talks about is his blocking. Look up there. It's the NFL's all-time leading rusher paying his dues for Dennis Gentry up front. So the Bears now go third down in a long two. No score on the board. We have 12 minutes to play in the first half. The Colts, a three touchdown underdog, trying to keep the Bears out. Suey is knocked down at about the three. See if he got the first down, he might not have. Suey, these Colts aren't playing like they're. There. These Colts aren't playing like they're a three and ten football team, Don. There's Iron Mike. Look at this. They're going to go for the field goal. And one at the three. 66,000 coaches telling Ditka to go for it, but he <laughs> sends out the field goal unit. And he's got a good kicker and rookie Fuller Kevin Butler. Kevin Butler. Steve Fuller is the holder. Bad knee and all. 20 yard there. field goal. 20 yard attempt by Kevin Butler, who's hit 23 of 28 field goals this year, scored 113 points as a rookie. He's up and good, and so with 11 minutes and three seconds to play in the first half, the Bears are finally on the board as they've taken a 3-0 lead over Indianapolis. Favored Bears, only a 3-0 leader in the second quarter. Colts are staying tough. Yeah, 18-point spread, that's what it was. The papers had. Yeah, obviously the uh, Colts don't have the same opinion. No, nobody bets, but... Yeah. Yeah. Obviously the Colts have uh, less of an opinion of the Bears than someone else does in this country. Colts are playing tough, and they do. When you're a three and ten football team and young, all you want is a chance late in the ball game to win. Keep it close, and a big play turns it into a win. Right now, Butler with the 20-yard field goal to open the scoring kicks off. Tough one to handle, but Albert Bentley does. He is a hard running man from Miami of Florida, and Albert Bentley gets out to the 32-yard line. So Indianapolis goes on offense. Dennis Gentry was on the tackle along with William Perry. Bears going 77 yards in 13 plays, but had to settle for a 20-yard field goal. Hagel's got a ways to become the Colts' all-time leading quarterback, doesn't he? Tarkin's thrown for more than Unitas. Yeah. Right now, Indianapolis trailing 3-0 goes first and 10. The Colts to their 32-yard line. Going for the long ball, Wayne Capers trying to run under it, and it's broken up nicely by Leslie Frazier. Screened his man off and had a play on the ball. Plain play all the way. It'll be second down and ten Colts. Frazier doesn't like the shove that Capers gave him. But with the new rules in the NFL, you can see there's contact there. Last year, I have a feeling a flag would have been thrown on someone, but both looking Frazier. back at the quarterback, now that contact is allowed. Their defense had given up just three touchdowns in seven games before Miami scored on its first five possessions. So far, the Bears going with a shutout here, but only leading 3 nothing. Second down and 10 after the long ball try and first down by Pagel. McMillan, Look at this. big and he's fast, and Fensick has a problem as he's taken off the play. Whoa. And the Colts break another big run. Randy McMillan, who was a number one draft choice out of Pittsburgh in 1981, Rips off a 25-yard gain. Now that's a 31-yard gain by Wansley, and now a 25-yard run by McMillan, and there's nobody there, Don. Here, two yards past the line of scrimmage. Fensick is the only guy left, and Chris Hinton right in front of him does an excellent job. Wow. There was nobody there. McMillan now six carries, 40 yards. Wilbur Marshall finally knocked him down. First down and 10 for the Colts at the Bear 43. Ball's caught. Matt Booza came down with it. He's ahead for a first down. Booza, who dropped one in open field, he's very sure-handed, makes a fine play, a 12-yard gain, and the Colts move on. This guy's not big. This guy's not fast. But he's got very big and very fast hands. Good possession receiver for the Colts. And there have been a lot of people open here so far. I don't know what's happening to the Chicago Bears, but for the second week in a row, not looking like that stifling defense that they had in the first 12 games of the season. Hagel 5-11 for 49 yards. 
Trying to get riled up at Wrigley Field. It's sold out stadium. It's been quiet for the most part. Looks like a painting in the stands as Pago guns one out. McMillan takes it. And he's down to the 28-yard line. Gain of only about four yards on the play, but it took near perfect execution to get that as Wilbur Marshall was covering. If you're looking for pluses as a Colt fan. The uh, Colts have yet to be sacked. And this Chicago Bear defense has beaten up a lot of quarterbacks. But they're staying with the short stuff. Randy McMillan came off that pit team that might have set a record for number one draft choices. He's 220 pounds. He's been clocked at 4-5 in the 40. Not many wide receivers run that fast. Second down and seven now for Indianapolis. Chicago leads the game 3-0. McMichael came in and slapped the ball back. Steve McMichael, big man from Texas with eight sacks this year, having his best season. He grades out as the Bears' number one defensive lineman this year. Defensive linemen are taught, get as much penetration as you can, and for a while, defensive linemen will be blind in their rush. Then once they get sight of the quarterback, put your hands up over the offensive lineman like a picket fence, and that's exactly what McMichael did. You can't believe the New England Patriots couldn't use that guy. And they cut him. Now it is third down coming up for Indianapolis. Hagel. Down at the 35-yard line, but there are two penalty markers down in the Chicago secondary. All over the place. One from each side. Here's Ben Dreith, our referee, to say. Offside against Chicago, so the sack is negated. And instead Offside of... Offside defense, number 95. Five yards, third down. Colts get the down over. Richard Dent, the leading sacker for Chicago with 13 and a half sacks, had three at Miami. Old quarterbacks have had a problem Trump in recent games with sacks. They, for the most part, though, protected their QBs well. Yeah, especially in the first part of the season. They were sacked only 11 times in the first eight games, but 21 times in the last six games. And that sack goes by the board. Five-yard pickup by penalty for the Colts. Now it's third down and just over two for Indianapolis. Hagel sets his backs. He's quick. Iron on the run. It's a fine catch for a first down. Coming off the flank was Matt Booza catching it below his knees. Toughest catch in football and a hard thrown ball. And he's ahead for a first down. Running away from the quarterback, too. That's a that's a very nice catch. You can see the audible call by Pagel at the line of scrimmage. And they're staying away from the pass rush. Look what at that. catch. That, he caught the back end of that football. That's his second catch of the day for 16 yards. You can't practice that either. Watch how low this ball goes. It's the point of the ball goes down to the ground. That's sinking away. He grabs it. So they convert the first down, and now the Colts with the Bear 20-yard line. First down and 10 with Chicago leading 3 to nothing. Randy McMillan takes it to the 15-yard line. He got five. Colts showing this Bear defense no respect whatsoever. Really aren't. You haven't seen the Colts. I know you've seen the Bears no matter where you're watching this game. The Colts won't quit. No matter what the score, where they're at. This is a young team. It's a lot of fire. And the Chicago coaches, you were saying, Trump, think they're only a couple of players away from being a real contender. No question about it. One of the spots they'd like to improve drastically is quarterback, by the way. Hagel's been working very well in this game against the number one defense in the NFL. Second down, pitch back to George Wansley. William Perry can't run him down, and Wansley's down inside the 15-yard line of Chicago. It'll bring up third and short yardage. Dave Dorison finally got him. You'll see number 72, William Perry. The cold helps him. You see right there, that's a tackle you would think he would make, wouldn't you? Wansley runs right out of that tackle and then slips. Oh, very little gain, bringing up third down in about two. I think William looked like he's going to eat him up like one of those cheeseburgers, but he lost him. So the Colts are threatening now. Third down and just over three. Bears lead the game in the second quarter, three nothing. Hagel throws. 
Urza wasn't even looking back at the ball as it comes in too high. And so, as the Colts send out their field goal team, let's go to Ahmad Rashad at NFL 85. All right, down in Buffalo, Ken O'Brien from his own end zone hooks up with Wesley Walker on this 96-yard touchdown. It's the longest in Jet history. Watch Walker turn the warp speed on. 14 to nothing, Jets, second quarter. <laughs> warp speed. Wesley's got it. Now, Raul, a leg raise back out. You'll recall his first try from 20 yards hit the upright and was no good after that long opening drive by Indianapolis. This is a 30-yard attempt, 31 yards. And he drills it, and we've got a tie game with 5.34 to play in the first half. Well, the Colts are hanging tough. They've tied the Bears, and we'll be back in a moment. 30 field goal. Good three Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at Soldier Field. The Colts have tied the game at three, and now they kick it off. And here comes Dennis Gentry for Chicago. Out to the 19-yard line, good special teams play by Indianapolis, led by Tate Randall, number 35. The Bears offense able to produce only a field goal so far with 5.24 to play in the first half. I'm back out with Jim McMahon at quarterback. Colts so far have run 29 plays, and the Bears 19. That last scoring drive by the Indianapolis Colts, 10 plays, 56 yards, and of course that 30-yard field goal by Allegra. Colts defense loaded with some top young number one draft choices when they came out, like Danell Thompson, Cooks, Krause, and Bickett. Big play athletes as the pitch back goes to Walter Payton. Nesby Glasgow, a hard-hitting strong safety, came up to make the strike for Indianapolis. Short gain on the play. Don, you said at the outset of our broadcast that the uh, Indianapolis coaches, uh, Rod Dauhauer, said this is our Super Bowl. Colts are playing like this is Super Bowl. And the most interesting thing I think about is the way they've come back from that, the, the disappointment of the opening drive. Went right down the field, yeah. had second and goal at the Chicago one. Subsequently missed a short field goal, and still it's played tight. And the coaches said at the outset, if the Colts can hang in early, they could build momentum and be tough throughout the fourth quarter. Game is tied 3-3. Calvin Thomas, a big back. Takes on people and is knocked down at the 28-yard line. Bring up third and about two. And I just noticed that graphic that uh, to this point in the ball game, the Colts had out outrushed the Chicago Bears. That is highly unusual. In 32 of the last 35 games the Bears have played, they have outrushed their opponents. Look at there. Almost two to one. Colts over the Bears. Since Dauhauer came to Indianapolis, he's released seven players since game one alone. Five were starters. No job Shakur. Rain Butler got the game ball. He's out of town. So it's Curtis Dickey. <laughs> and Arch Lee. People leaving early look like Willie Broughton. They don't go 110% in practice, Dahauer said. It's going to be goodbye. Have a nice life. Yeah. Well. Defense, encroachment made contact. That's five yards, and that's the first down. Here's an answer to, I think, a good trivia question. Name the youngest player playing in the NFL. It's not Bernie Kosar. It's Willie Broughton. He just turned 21. Well, he's a very intense guy. They say every Monday, sure, he's going to be cut. But every Tuesday, he's still there. Right now, Chicago with a first down, and the game tied 3 3 goes from its 33 yard line. Man, looping it up, and the Colt defenders come up. Glasgow came up on the tight end, Tim Reitman. Broughton had his hand right in McMahon's face there. Speaking of young teams, bad news for the NFL. The Chicago Bears are the youngest team in the NFC. Boom. That, that's remarkable. I agree. That, that, when I found that out, I was shocked. And O'Brien with two touchdown throws for the Jets. And they look to go to 10 and 4. Buffalo's been out of business for some time. Now. Years, not days. Second down and 10 coming up for Chicago at the Bear 33 yard line. Big rush. The fans in trouble, and they get him at the 28. Dwayne Bickett, number 50, Donnell Thompson, and Johnny Cooks all had him pinned in. 
So now it's third down and long for Jim McMahon and Chicago's offense. Play action fake by McMahon. Fooled no one. You see Bickett coming from the left side. That's on Colbert. There's our best offensive lineman. And Johnny Cook's also there to kind of flush him a little bit. First sack of the day for the Colts. Well, these guys are playing not like they're three and ten. The game is tied. Three three were in the second quarter. One local paper had the Indianapolis Colts a 20 point underdog for this game. But they've tied Chicago as we're down to three minutes to play in the first half. It's a 3 3 game. Third down and 15 for Jim McMahon and the Bears. McMahon is cut down at the 30, and the Colts will get it back on a punt. And some boos are heard here at Soldier Field. Uh, to repeat, they are undefeated here at Soldier Field. That time, Scott Burkus and Chris Scott made contact. Last time the Bears went undefeated at home, 1963, they won the NFL's championship. Colts will have good field position in all probability and some time to work with 2.24 to play in the first half clock running. Corey Buford hits the ball downfield. Robbie Martin's going to take it at his 36. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line as the game clock's down to 2.05 to play in the first half, and the score is still Bears 3 and the Colts 3. Jim McMahon, the hungriest bear of all, can have the ball right now. We're not a company. Your field in an unusually mild December day on the shores of Lake Michigan and an unusually surprising score-up. The underdog Indianapolis Colts hanging tough. They've tied the Bears through almost two quarters of play. It's a 3-3 game. Now at 2.05 to go in the first half, the Colts have the ball back with Mike Tagle, the quarterback. Played very well. Tagle trying to get Wayne Capers again on that look in off the flank. It'll be second down and 10. Sun breaking through again now. Temperature was in the high 30s at kickoff time. They haven't completed that slant pass yet. They've been trying and trying hard. You got to be doubling up on Booze at this point. He's got some nice balls. I don't blame him. Yeah, he's excellent receiver. Great hands. Mike Pagel now seven for 16, throwing the ball for 56 yards. There's been no interceptions in the game. No fumble. Mellon again breaks the crust behind good blocking from Ben up the left guard and Chris Hinton the left tackle. Two minutes to play in the first half. Raul Allegre Trump with an unusual looking get up on over there. Yeah, he's got sweatpants and it appears on his right foot, which is his kicking foot. He has a weighted shoe that he wears around. The lush is there. Of course, the Colts used to playing indoors. Stay comfortable any way you can. Just adds to the mystique of all these kickers. Colts practice outdoors all week in Indianapolis. Bears practice indoors all week. NFL 85 coming up at halftime as the Colts look to go to halftime as the leader. The game is tied 3-3. 158 to play in the first half. Hagel swings it out. Nobody's there. Fensick was the closest to it. Penalty marker down in the Indianapolis backfield. Play hit. I think they got Otis Wilson, 55. Getting Pago late. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback, number 50. That's 15 in the first down. They called it on Mike Singletary. I think it was Otis Wilson. Anyway, somebody hit the quarterback, and it's another 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down for the Indianapolis Colts. Wow. That is a big play with 154 to go in the first half. So the Colts get it inside the 35-yard line of Chicago. It was Mike Singletary. He doesn't blitz that often. Generally, it's Wilson, Singletary, and everybody else. But uh, excuse me, Wilson uh, and and Marshall and everybody else. But Singletary stays at home. Maybe that's why he hit him. He doesn't blitz that much. The Colts have first and ten. The Bears, 36. I know one thing, Trump. Halftime in the Bears locker room will not be filled with a lot of idle chit chat. Well, did you broke his... a lot of laughing and scratching in there. Yeah, did you broke his hand the last time these two teams met and held up his good hand the next time and said, Win one for lefty. Yes, win one for lefty. First down and 10, Colts. 
end up to McMillan, who dives inside to the 33-yard line. Got ahead for a gain of about three. Singletary made the stop. The clock runs with 1.42 to play. First half. Interesting choice of plays there by the Colts. There's 136, 135 left in the first half, and they run. Only time the Bears were held to three points in the first half was against Tampa Bay. I think the Bears scored Whoa. 35 in the second half, though. How about that? Play flicker. Long ball downfield. It's not near anybody. He's running the fly pattern. William Perry was putting the heat on. Tell you what, when this kid William Perry throws a quarterback to the ground, he is thrown. He looks like a baggie on uh, Mike Bagel. To McMillan, you see Perry with his bull rush get by Ut. Watch, look at that. Boy, it just crumbles his legs. Mm. Defensive coordinator Buddy Ryan, he doesn't sweet talk those Bears either on the sideline. I think he probably had some words for William. You know what else he does? He posts the grades of every player for the rest of the team to see on a weekly basis. Colts five for seven, converting third downs. They've done well. Now they have a third and eight. Over the run, end around. Wayne Capers. Perry's taken off the play. Capers gets free, but not for very long. And that was a lot of running. East and West and got a loss of about seven yards. There was also a clip that nobody called. Dan Hampton, number 99, was clipped right at the end of that play. No flag was thrown at all. That's a loss of four yards. Animal, they call him. That guy has got to have the longest arms in the NFL. Walk in on his knuckles. Absolutely. When he gets down in his stance, I mean, if you're lined up across from him, you see nothing but forearms. You can't see any body or face mask or anything. Both take the time out. You were saying, though, when you played, the, the record for long arms belonged to Too Tall Jones. Too Tall Jones. That was a big arm. It was a long arm, and it was connected to something mean. And we'll be back right after this. Don, the Colts are doing something interesting here. They're waiting to the last second to bring their entire team on the field so the Bears don't know, in fact, what the Colts might be doing, and it looks like they're going to try for a field goal. Look at all the change going on there. And try a long one. It'll be a 56-yarder. Longest this season for Raul Allegra is just 44 yards. And the officials stop everything. The holder, Ron Stark, is an excellent athlete. Was a decathlete. He can throw it. 56-yard attempt they're lining up for. They're going to boot it. It's on the way. He's got the chunk. But he's wide left. Hit it flush, but he's wide left. And so, a 55-yard unofficial field goal is no good. Wide to the left. And it's the Bears taking over the ball with 59 seconds to play in the first half. And they very conceivably could get in field goal range shortly. No question about it. I'm surprised that the Colts would take a timeout, assemble everybody at the sideline, and then just kick the field goal. And it looked like the Bears felt that they were going to kick the field goal. Maybe they didn't realize what a great left-handed athlete Ron Stark is, the holder for Raul Allegri. Monday night when we were at the Orange Bowl in Miami, that might have been the loudest NFL crowd we've heard in a long time. This might be the quietest. I think they're surprised. Their fans a bit stunned as the Chicago Bears uh, prohibit a favorite are tied with Indianapolis 3-3 with 59 seconds to go in the half. Man puts it up and Dennis simply can't get it at the 50. So it'll be second down and 10 now for Chicago at the Bear 37-yard line. He's mad at himself. This week was the first week. Actually, the week of the Miami game was the first week McMahon had any chance to really work out and throw. Had a bad shoulder. Overthrew Gentry just a little bit and said, how can I miss that? Jim McMahon comes in completing 59% of his passes. He's thrown for 13 touchdowns this year. Has had eight intercepted. Has an 87 quarterback rating. Very high. Days four for 10 for 82 yards. And no turnovers in this game. Arjun can't hold it for 50. So it'll be third down and 10 now for Chicago. I think that's overthrown once again, Don. Ever so slightly. But you can see the rustiness, I believe, in Jim McMahon. Those numbers are not typical of Jim McMahon. Now he's mad at himself. He's not mad at Gentry. Sets up well. 
I think he's mad at himself, not at the receiver. McMahon is a perfectionist. He didn't hear to Chicago when he was drafted number one and say that we're going to win because I can't stand losing. Jim McMahon, 24 and 4 as a starter at quarterback for Chicago. They won 24 and lost four. They've got to have him the distance to go the distance. McMahon rolling out. Down at the 41-yard line. Way short of a first down and a third down play, so it's fourth down and the Bear offense fails to click again as the first half ticks down. So far in this first half, Bears have done very little offensively. I can think of a one big run by Gentry and then that 15-yard penalty on the shovel pass. Other than that, the offense has been stifled. Give credit to the Colts defense. Colts have played a fine game. They came in here planning to play one. They were looking forward to playing Chicago. This is the big game for the Colts. They are now located in an area which for decades has been a hotbed of Chicago Bear fan interest. Indianapolis. Before the Colts came to town. Now in the punt for is Maury Buford and they'll let the clock run out. So the first half is over and the numbers are up and surprising ones they are indeed. As the Chicago Bears have been played to a 3-3 standoff by the Colts. The eight. Uh, New England last week. And today they've given up just seven to the Chicago Bears as Allegra kicks off and Gentry takes it at the two yard line for Chicago. Breaks it. Penalty marker down. Allegra misses him and finally they get him out of bounds. Well, it's a senseless penalty if it's against the Bears. You know why? That was a good 40 yards away from the run, Don. It's against Chicago. And Gentry runs near side of the field. The flag is all the way on the far side of the field. That's that's dumb football. There's no other way to look at it. Number 75 receiving team illegal push in the back. Ten yard penalty. Stefan Humphreys big offensive lineman from the University of Michigan negates a 52 yard return. But then again a lot of times the return wouldn't have been 52 yards if somebody hadn't been fouled. But not in this case. That flag was thrown on the far hash mark. And the ball was run this way. That's a bad start. Well, the Bears have it now back to their 19-yard line to go first and 10. Look in the middle of the screen there. That's a senseless penalty. That, that return is set up to the near side. If he didn't touch that guy, he doesn't make the tackle. Well, I didn't, didn't look like much of a foul either, though. Here's McMahon throwing downfield, and Willie Goff goes high and comes down with the ball at the 39-yard line. The Bears come out firing and get a big play on first down, a 21-yard gain for Chicago. You have to feel for any defensive back who lines up against Willie Galt with that world-class sprinter speed, and it's legitimate. You've got to give him a pretty good cushion. Preston Davis does. Good timing pass by McMahon, and before Willie Galt turns around, ball's on the way. 21-yard pickup, first down, Bears. Looking for some more on another first down, and again he runs right up the middle of the field, and Jim McMahon is down to the Indianapolis 45-yard line. So he gets 15 yards on the run, and all of a sudden the Bears come out with a couple of big plays. Uh, here's the here's the the freakish nature of the first half. Jim McMahon is the Bears' leading rusher, and they've all come on plays like this. I'm not sure whose responsibility he is, but you see Odom 93, Krause 55. They're the two inside backers. That rush is fourth now for 34 yards. And he leads the Bears in rushing. Indianapolis coverage has been very good, but they have left the open middle field for Jim McMahon to run on when he couldn't find the open receiver. Now McMahon with a timing pattern, a poorly thrown ball. Margarine had no play on it. It'll be second down and 10 for Chicago at the Indianapolis 45-yard line. Margarine from Stanford called on to start today because Dennis McKinnon has a muscle pull. Margarine caught a ton of passes from John Elway when they were both at Stanford. Acrobatic receiver. He's wearing his uh, jersey the way Jim McMahon does. Quarterbacks set the trend on your football team. Now it's going to be second down and 10 for Chicago, 45 yard line of the Colts. The game is tied early in the third quarter, 3 to 3. Then Galt off the left flank, 
turning back at the ball. He looks to just get that step to move on by the defender, but the tackle was made by Eugene Daniel, who's roundly congratulated. McMahon has not thrown the ball particularly well today. That was just his second completion in his last eight attempts. Man, of course, troubled by a bad shoulder. Went out in the Green Bay game here November 3rd. Missed the next three games. Came in when Steve Fuller was injured at Miami last Monday night. Third down and almost five for Chicago. Walter Payton. Ryan Howard to get a first down. He's going to be close, but maybe just short of it. I say they go for it, too. It's going to be interesting here, Trump. Fourth down and less than a yard. I think if I'm Mike Ditka, you go. You got to light a fire underneath your football team. Yeah, they're signaling the play in. They're going for it. Man waving to the crowd to keep the noise down so he can call plays and get his team into alignment. You see, they need just a couple of feet for the first down. Lights are on at Soldier Field, but the day is very good indeed. Temperature up to 39 degrees. It's actually jumped up a few degrees since the kickoff. Listen to his voice inflection now. His own number takes it behind his center, Jay Hilgenberg, and Chicago has a first down inside the 35-yard line of the Colts. A little play like that, Tom. Just a fourth down, and the coach shows confidence in the offense. We'll go for it here. Maybe what the Bears need. I thought that man was going to go up there and give it that baritone tenor hut hut. Look at that. That's the Colts have done an excellent job. That's Bears aren't struggling that much offensively. Colts have just shut them down. Right now, it's first down and 10, Chicago. Game tied, third quarter, 3-3. Three, three. Emery Moorhead can't get to the ball at the 30. The Chicago tight end swinging out, so it'll be second down and 10 for the Bears. 10.58 to play in the third quarter. Cooks and Thompson all over McMahon. This was a three-step drop. Watch Cooks. He blitzes inside. They run a game. He's basically untouched and right there to slam him to the turf. Turf, and of course, McMahon does have that bad shoulder. He does. He won't show it if he can help it, but he took a hard hit there. McMahon's not big. He's 6'1", 185 pounds, and he's breakable. Bad shoulder. He's undergone knee surgery twice. Last year against the Raiders, he suffered the lacerated kidney that almost finished his career. Ditka says he is the heart of the linebacker. As McMahon has time, guns it downfield, and it's almost taken for a touchdown, but broken up by Eugene Daniel, running stride for stride with the super-fast Willie Galt. McMahon right on Willie Galt's hands, but Eugene Daniel was there to strip the ball. Yeah, give the plus to Eugene D. Daniel. Was not fooled at all, stayed with Willie Galt, didn't take any false steps. It's a good rollout. You can see that Chicago is now paying some respect to the Colt defensive line. Daniel gets there just as the ball does. That's a big play, Eugene Daniel. Great second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Kenneth Edmondson. Our director, Andy Rosenberg, is Eugene Daniel, one of the leading interceptors in the NFL with six so far. Breaks up what would have been a touchdown throw by McMahon. Now from the shotgun on third and ten. No play. coming. Man's got to unload, and he has to duck out of bounds on third down. The coverage was good again. Dalton, Eugene Daniel are shaking hands after every play. Now that counts as a sack, so it's the second one against the Bears today. And Ken Marjoram was wide open. McMahon could not see him just down the field. A loss of two. So the drive stalls. You were talking Trump about the Bears having the youngest team in the National Conference. Somebody pointed out they also have the oldest coaching staff. Yeah, Mike Dick, I think, was very smart. Put a lot of experienced people in here. A lot of these guys have been with the Bears before. I think they have three former head coaches in the NFL on this staff. So the Bears coming up empty on that third down. Now we'll have to punt the ball. Maury Buford in. And he arcs it way down. Looks like it's going to carry in. Oh, no, this is no, going to rule. It was angled out of bounds. 
inside the five-yard line. So Maury Buford got it out of bounds inside the five-yard line, a 33-yard punt, but it was a whole lot better than that. The Colts get the ball. They're pinned in their own end when we come back. The Indianapolis Colts playing a standout game. They're locked in a 3-3 tie with heavily favored Chicago. Third quarter. Now the Colts start out in the second half with the ball for the first time. Pinned at their three-yard line on the laser accurate punt of Maury Buford. Colts go to the run and McMillan with both hands on the ball takes it out to about the seven-yard line. Got four. Cliff Thrift in as an extra linebacker. The former San Diego Charger made the stop for Chicago. Only two sacks of the day. The Colts against the Chicago Bears and no turnovers. In their three wins, the Colts are plus five in the takeaway giveaway. In their ten losses, they're minus 11. Matt Buza, the sure-handed one, is out on the left flank. Capers is also on the left side. Second down and six for Indianapolis. Throwing in the strike on the run. Coming up with the ball is Pat Beach, the tight end of Mike Hagel, his roommate on the road, and it's an 18-yard gain and a first down for the Colts, so they're out of jail, away from their own three-yard line. This Colt team has not been the least bit impressed with this number one defense in the NFL that time. Excellent call, rolling out away from the pass rush, and they roll to Richard Dent. He's the fastest defensive lineman that the Chicago Bears have. They roll to him. To reduce his speed, you'll see Dent right there, handled by Salt. Hagel squares his shoulders. Good 18 yard pick up the beach. First down and 10 back to the run. Not much there as McKillen takes on the, their defense on the left side. And the first down carry, he got ahead for a couple of yards, out to about the 27. Singletary and Wilbur Marshall were on the stop for Chicago. Game clock ticking. It's down at 9.30 to play in the third quarter. And, uh, notice that they really haven't gotten a George Wansley much for, for quite a while. That first drive, he had that big play, and they've gone away from him. There's Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator. Defense has held Baltimore to Indianapolis Colts to three. As it's now second down and seven. Shut it down at the 30. Richard Dent makes the stop on Randy McMillan. And now we'll see if we see a Mike Pagel sprint out. The New England Patriots well on their way to extending their season record to 10 and 4. Philadelphia holding to a two run lead over the Redskins. And it's 20 to 3. Miami opening up at Green Bay now. The Jets with a 21 0 lead over Buffalo at the half. And the Bengals, who went out in front 22 to nothing, now leading Dallas at halftime 22 to 3. They're showing blitz here now, Don. Third down. Hand up to McMillan, and the Bears make a stop. William Perry makes the big play behind the line of scrimmage, so the Colts have to punt the ball. One of the things the Bears like to do with this 46 defense or 50 defense, depending on what you read, is free up people on the defensive line. William Perry runs behind the center. Donaldson doesn't even touch him, and he's there to make the tackle. Big William, of whom it was said he never lifted a weight or watched his own. But the truth is, he's one of the most powerful people that ever came into this organization. I agree. Kicks downfield with a 22 yard line. Ortega takes it back. There's Chicago, and he's out to the 35 yard line. Well hit ball by Ron Stark. Wayne Bickett covering on special teams for Indianapolis. 50-yard punt and a 14-yard return. The Bears get it back when we come back. We're back at Soldier Field in Chicago. 7.36 to play in the third quarter. Don Crickey with Bob Crumpy. The game is tied 3-3. Chicago Bears a heavy favorite. And Walter Payton a heavy favorite to get a ninth consecutive 100-yard rushing game. But today he's been held to 18 yards on seven carries by an Indianapolis defense that's been playing the game of its season. Jim McMahon, on first down in trouble, swings out a screen to Peyton. 
Peyton gets ahead to the 44-yard line, a gain of about six on the play. Nesby Glasgow and Cliff Oda made the stop for Indianapolis. You can use Walter so many different ways. He'll be a good lead blocker for you. He'll run the sweep. He'll get you the tough yardage. And he's always had great hands today. His third catch now. 31 yards. And a well set up screen. But it was defensed very well by the Colts too. He only picked up seven yards. It's a doubleheader day on NBC Sports. A big matchup in the AFC West. The Raiders and the Broncos co-leaders meet at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Most of you will see that game here on NBC as right now with 6.45 to play. Third quarter, the pitch back goes to Peyton. Second down carry, he's short of the first down, but by less than a yard perhaps as Dwayne Bickett got him. Bickett has been all over the place. He came from the far side of the field to make that tackle, Don. Watch where he lines up in that huddle. He came all the way to this side of the field to make the tackle. Big rangy linebacker from Southern California, 6'5", 245. Johnny Cooks, Cliff Bowden, Barry Krause, and Wayne Bickett backing the line for Indianapolis, all having standout games. Danelle Thompson, Brad White, and Chris Scott, the defensive front three. Why don't they use William Perry here, third and short? They're going to use Suey right now. Walter Payton in the backfield, as you see, 30 yards. thrown ball by Jim McMahon to Ken Marjoram and the Bears are across midfield with a first down. Nesby Glasgow underneath. Timing pass. Very, very tough for any defense to stop. I repeat it. I, I don't think I've seen uh, William Perry in any short yardage situations. He's just on the goal line. Generally, that offense is just about the same. Goal line and short yardage. They save him for the scoring zone, huh? And in the end zone three times this year. The Bears haven't been in there yet today. The game is tied on a pair of field goals. It's 3-3. And Suey turning up field on a first down carry. He's close to the Colt 40-yard line. Gain of about six on the play. Danelle Thompson, 99, made the knockdown for Indianapolis. When you watch the Colts, it appears that they're using a little bit of the flex defense. Keep the stop top of the screen. They got one guy off the line of scrimmage. Brad White for pursuit. And Suey goes outside. Marjoram got a good block here. Got in somebody's way. That's about all you expect a 180-pound receiver to do. But that's a good seven-yard pickup. That may be Walters. Longer, that was Matt Suey, excuse me. Maybe Suey's. Five carries now nine yards. He's not done much either. Colts have been shutting down the run. Let's see if McMahon puts it up now. Now he's going to put it back on the ground to Suey, and he's ahead for a first down for Chicago. As Matt Suey from Penn State takes it down to the 35-yard line. Chris Scott and Dwayne Bickett on the stop. Bears have been here before. Not very little out of it, though. This is not the first time that they've been down at the Colts 35-yard line. They've had great field position throughout this game. This dive started at uh, their own 37. They've had to work hard for the 25 yards that they've gotten. Four of the Indianapolis Colts' last five opponents have scored 34 points or more. The normally high-scoring Chicago Bears so far have been able to put up only a field goal. It's a 3-3 game third quarter as Walter Payton gets the room, gets some, and dives down to the 30. Packer has just scored a touchdown. Jim Zorn in a quarterback. Through to Preston Bernard for 29 yards and a touchdown. It's 20 to 10. So the Bears now have the ball down inside the Indianapolis 30 yard line down to the 29. Colts have covered well in the secondary. There's been a whole lot open deep for Jim McMahon. It's Looking at outlet men a lot of the time. Of course, he's run the ball well when the coverage was good and there was nowhere to throw. He's the Bears' leading rusher today. Walter Payton is ahead to the 26-yard line. He'll be short of a first down, but not by much. It brings up another third and short for Chicago. Chris Scott was on the stop, a second-year player from Purdue. Payton out 10 carries, 29 yards. I think for his career, he's averaged better than five yards a rush today, 2.9. And uh, he has eight straight 100-yard rushing days. 
coming into today's game. Kansas City back on track today, leading Atlanta 31 to 10 in the third quarter. Todd Blackledge at quarterback for the Chiefs. Just threw for a touchdown. The Bears and the Colts tied 3-3. Three -three. Third quarter clock down to 335 and running. Third down, barely a yard for Chicago. Walter Payton makes a hit for the first down for Chicago down to the 20. Chris Scott got him at downfield, and the Bears have four more downs as they drive on. Peyton keeps getting up after every rush his entire career. One of the most durable running backs to have ever played the game. Cornerstone of the franchise. Never takes a playoff. He is playing impaired today, though, because he's had a tough bout with flu all week. Did a good job by the offensive line of the Chicago Bears just consuming defensive linemen, not trying to move them, just take them where they'll go. And then Walter Payton, he's the guy who has to read which way to go. Jim McMahon looks into the end zone on first down, throws it to Suey. Excellent hands. He goes high, comes down with the ball at the 16-yard line, a gain of only four. But Suey had to make a very spectacular leap to get that. Preston Davis knocked him down. Looks like the Bears are trying to uh, feature Walter Payton in this drive. Now nine plays, and Payton's had four carries and a catch. Second down and six coming up for Chicago. Jay Hilgenberg at center for the Bears. Mark Ports and Kurt Becker are the guards. Jim Covert and Keith Van Horn, two former number one draft choices, are the tackles. Emily Moorhead, a tight end. Now Reitman's in the game, a tight end set to the right. And throws a bump on the play, but no flag as Marjorie was going for the ball inside the five yard line. Cliff Odom tipped the ball. Ran a slant, Odom in with a perfect drop. You'll see 93, just to the left bottom of the screen, gets his hand on it, knocks it away. So third down arises now for Chicago at the 16-yard line of Indianapolis. Cliff Odom goes out, extra defenders for the pass come in. Stone the ball 20 times in the game. It's completed nine for 123 yards for Chicago. And off to Payton. He might go in. Walter Payton is into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Sixteen yards, and the tie is broken as Walter Payton scores his 11th touchdown of this season. You keep giving the ball to a great player like that. Eventually, he's going to break one. Colts came in with their their pass defense. He's now 12 carries, 51 yards in that touchdown. And when they come in with that spread defense, that's when the Bears like to give it to Payton. Good looking play. Chicago's in the end zone for the first time in the game. Kevin Butler's point after is good, and with 1:53 to play in the third quarter, the Bears take a 10 to 3 lead. We'll be back to Soldier Field and the Bears kickoff right after this. The Chicago Bears just mixed the pass and the run. Walter Payton going in on the payoff end, a 16-yard run. And the Bears have their first touchdown of the day, and they lead now 10-3 over Indianapolis. Chicago ready to kick it off. Robbie Martin and Albert Bentley back deep for the Colts. Line drive kick. Martin picks it up. Out to the 24-yard line, and there the Colts going offense first and 10. Cliff Thrift was down to make the play. Once again, the draw trap. You'll see it from ground level, all the action that takes place. Walter Payton, his longest run of the day, 16 yards into the end zone. But watch the way this play develops. From behind the defense, watch number 94, Scott Burkus. Across the line of scrimmage, he's trapped. Van Horn gets the defensive back. Walter Payton, no one touches him till he's at the two. Nice call. Well executed play. Now let's see if the Colts can take it down the field. They're trailing 10 to 3. Hager looks, fires. Boza can't hold the ball at the 35 yard line as people start up after the play. Chris Hinton and William Perry are swinging. Whoa. Stand back from that one. 
<laughs> we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Channel 17, WTVO Rockford. Chris Hinton doesn't give away much size to William Perry. Hinton comes <laughs> in at 295. As we're at Soldier Field in Chicago, a surprisingly mild December day. Chicago Bears trying to rebound from the disappointment at Miami last Monday night were tied by Indianapolis 3-3 at the half. Bears have just scored in a 16-yard run by Walter Payton. They now lead the game 10-3 in the third quarter. Down Cookie with Bob Tumpy at Soldier Field. Here's a throw and a strike. Pat Beach comes down with the ball close to a first down. They'll spot him ahead for a nine-yard gain. Scoreboard changing in Green Bay getting back into its game with Miami as Jim Zorn has just thrown for a second touchdown pass. This one a 56 yard of James Lofton. Oh. Who was favored in that game? Oh, Dallas, yeah. Cincinnati. By a fortnight, Dallas. Really? Yeah. Cincinnati leading 29 to 3. Boomer Isiason just threw on to Steve Kreider. It's a double header day on NBC Sports. The big second game, the Raiders and the Broncos at Mile High Stadium. Another big game at Seattle. The Browns, Raiders in the FC Central, go against the Seahawks. They're both fighting for playoff spots. And up to George Wansley on third down and one. He was knocked down for a loss. As the very quick linebacker, Ron Rivera from California, shot the gap and got him. Also an assist to Wilbur Marshall. Rivera did a great job getting him on the ground, but watch Wilbur Marshall right there on the ground. Just trips him up ever so little, moves him around, and then help comes Singletary and Rivera. the National Football League's all-time leading putter, Ron Stark, is out to hit the ball for the Colts. Standing back inside his 20. Fumble! He does get it away. They're setting up a return. Son is tough. Colts pick up the ball. That's he didn't touch Aaron's. it. He didn't touch it. He didn't touch it. That's the Bears. Chicago ball, first down 10 at the 25-yard line. And Don, you hit it right on the head. That is a tough son. A 42-yard punt, almost a disaster. Stark didn't get it cleanly. The receiver did not touch the football. And there's going to be an illegal man downfield against the Colts because it took so long for Stark to punt it. The ball just bounced right out of his hands, didn't it? He shied away from it. Really. And there's no reason for Stark not to catch that ball cleanly. But actually, the receiver of the Chicago Bears got very lucky. Keith Artigo lost it in the sun, and then the ball did not bounce to it. An eligible man downfield, two men on a kicking team, decline a penalty. First down, Chicago. Watch again. When Artigo looks up for the ball, all of a sudden he loses it. The ball does not make contact with it. And therefore, it can't be picked up by the punting team. That is not a free kick. Now watch start. This ball is right at him, and it just, he tries to spin it so he's not kicking the laces, and he still gets a 42-yard punt off. <laughs> yeah, they had a return set up, didn't have a rush. They came when he saw him drop it, and he just got it away. And now Chicago, scoring on his last possession, gets the ball again, first and ten. And hands to Walter Payton in a good defensive play. Cliff Hodum shot the gap, the big linebacker to make the knockdown, and that brings the third quarter to an end with the Bears in the lead, 10 to 3. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. The deep, dark secret being told by William Perry. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's not leaning on Dan Hampton. That could be IR for Hampton. Chicago Bears with a 10 to 3 lead. Now start the fourth quarter. Jim McMahon has gone the distance at quarterback. Peyton and Suey are his setbacks. Really got on the right flank of the top of your screen. Marjoram comes in motion. He's looking at Willie Golf. Golf. Yeah. Now he's looking to get out of trouble. He does not. He's knocked down at the 23 yard line. Third sack of the day for the Colt defense. I'll tell you what, Chicago seems to have gotten well. Byron Smith on the sack. In that third quarter, time of possession for the Chicago Bears was astounding. It was 10-10 to 4.50 in favor of the Chicago Bears.
dominate for the most part in time of possession. They've held that advantage in 36 of their last 37 games. Right now, they're going to put it up. Third down and 12 for Jim McMahon, although we saw on a similar play. Went to a pitch to Walter Payton, who's good for a touchdown. And McMahon on the spread out, another pitch up the middle, and this time they go to Suey, and he's ahead. Not for a first down across the 30, he'll be a good five yards short. So Chicago has to punt the ball to the Colts. We have 14-10 to play in the game, and the clock's running. Ah, and Scott Burkus almost caught that ball. Once you run that shovel pass, you're pretty much committed to it. There are no outlet receivers on a shovel pass. Lucas was standing right there. So we're lucky to catch it. The offense today has not been marvelous for the Chicago Bears. Now they left something in Miami that might take a few games for them to get back in that rollaway form of their steamrolling teams as they did for a while. Chicago will have the home field right through the playoffs as long as they're in Whoa, the Super this. Bowl. Well hit downfield, and Martin has to let it hop, and the Bears are going to down it inside the five-yard line of Indianapolis. Big league play by punter Maury Buford. A 65-yard punt pins the Colts back. They'll have the ball when we come back. Bob Trumpy, Colts need some big plays now. Maybe Pagel will be firing the rest of the way to get him back in this. Yeah, I, I agree with you. They do have to start putting it up. But the thing that impresses me the most is I think Miami last Monday night uh, showed to the rest of the NFL that Chicago is in fact human. And I think the Colts came in here today with, with no real problem of facing such a point of defense in a place where they're undefeated for the 1985 season. And I think the Colts have played that way, that there's no real mystique about the Chicago Bears. If you play hard, you got a chance to win. Well, Ditka said when things go good, you get to reading the papers and believing a lot of things. Now we've learned no one's invincible. Their crowd exhorting that defense to try to get the ball back. Hagel firing from his end zone, and he overthrows Matt Booz at the 10-yard line. Didn't set up. Now William Perry starting up again in the end zone with Chris Hinton. Stand back. I admire that official for getting in the middle there. I'd pay to see that one in the ring. Yeah. Thing about, I think this is an easy completion for Mike Pagel to make if he sets up. He just went back and kind of forgot the fundamentals that a quarterback needs to complete passes. And I'll see if we can see what happens once again. A quarterback has to set up to throw it. You see Otis Wilson trying to get the ball up there. Oh, that beach and Otis Wilson going at it. Take down two points, no reversal. They'll start from up. Colts are playing into a bright sunshine right now. They're not used to that in the Hoosier Dome. I think the Bear fans are trying to get back at the Miami fans at the Colts' expense here. Mike Cagle's throwing the ball 20 times, has completed nine for 82 yards. They always sell out Soldier Field, and for the most part, this crowd of 66,000. And a stadium that was originally built back in 1919 on pilings in Lake Michigan has been quiet. Last time the Bears were undefeated and untied at home was in 56. The season did not have a happy ending for Chicago. They were laid to waste by the Giants in the NFL championship game. That season took place in Wrigley Field. A little different than Soldier Field. It'll be second down and 10 for the Colts when Pagel can call signals. End up to George Wansley, and the Bears are there to get him. Look at William Perry come smoking. McMichael was the first to get him. Then William Perry taking on blockers like a sumo wrestler, slapping him back. He doesn't slap you back either. He steamrolls you back. Now Perry comes out. And an awful lot of comments. Watch once again. Left side of your screen. Little delay handoff to Wansley. 
as Michael makes the first contact. Wilbur Marshall and Vincent good hit, and then Barry cleans up. And Whitty might have been hit on. He's angry. Third down and ten. Colts with a problem. Shuffle pass. Fumble. Fumbles. No. Ball. Bentley got it. Incomplete pass. Yeah, they're going to rule that try to shuffle pass. But I think he might have taken a couple of strides with it when he dropped it. He did recover it. Wilbur Marshall versus Matt Booza. Flags thrown. That pass has to go as simply an incomplete pass. Scheduling the rest of the way is no day at the beach for the Chicago Bears. They've got to go to New Jersey to play the New York Jets next. Then they've got to go to Pontiac, Michigan to play the team that's unbeaten at home, the Lions. I didn't see Bentley catch that ball. Did you? I thought he took a couple of strides with it. It looked like a fumble after he had it. Yeah, I, I thought it bounced right off his leg. Ben Dreith will figure it out, though. All right, we're working on it here as we have 12. And a personal the foul game. on both teams after the whistle, fourth down. Let's see if we can pick up this thing now. Uh, from behind the offense. I, well, I, I, don't, I still can't tell if he got the, got the ball or not. Richard Dent saying it. Let's see if we can pick it up again. There's Bentley coming. No, he never had control of it. That's just an incomplete pass. The uh, offensive lineman right in front of him, and he never had control. So it's fourth down. Tremendous punt hit downfield by Ron Stark. Or to go, taking it back at his 40. And he is back across midfield and down to the 45 yard line of Indianapolis. A 50 yard punt and a 15 yard return. Save the Honey Bears is the cry here in Chicago. There's some banners up in the stadium. The dancing Honey Bears that support these Chicago Bears. You know what they're forming here in Chicago now? Bridgerettes. Cheerleaders that must weigh 200 pounds or more. And it's taking hold. Every good winning. Pitch back to Peyton. Down to the 41 yard line of the Colts. Bears holding to a 10 3 lead in the fourth quarter. New England ready to go 10 and 4, leading the Detroit Lions. Philadelphia now extends its lead to 12 to 3 over Washington. That puts the lights out for the Skins' playoff hopes. Green Bay close to Miami. Jets continue to lead Buffalo by 21. Not half time. Colts. Bengals oh. got another one. A fair whipping they got. Might not be the worst this season. Wow, that's amazing. Kansas City having a good day. They've not had many this season. Here is Jim McMahon. Ryan Time letting a rip. Margarine comes down with the ball, but out of bounds, and so it'll be third down. 12 minutes left to play in the game. There has not been a turnover. Three sacks all by the Indianapolis Colts. Excellent coverage throughout the day on the majority of Chicago receivers. McMahon is, was the leading rusher until the last carry by Walter Payton. This has been a spectacular performance by the Indianapolis Colts. They're still very much in the game. A long way to go, 12 minutes to play. Bears leading by seven, 10 to three. Calvin Thomas, a big back from Illinois, hits down to the 35-yard line. Third down and six carry. It looks like Thomas has a first down for Chicago. Rod Dahauer hoping his Colts can get it back and move it downfield as they did in the first quarter. Cliff Odom on the tackle for Indianapolis. Well, you certainly can't shortchange the effort by the Indianapolis Colts. They've been working hard all day. Patriots getting a field goal as they go up now. Bring up 20 points. Raiders and the Broncos, first place in the AFC West is on the line. The feature game on the NBC Sports Doubleheader Day. Now the big one, Cleveland of Seattle. Now the handoff goes and running high with the ball is Calvin Thomas taking on people. He's down to the 28-yard line on first down. Got ahead for seven. 
235 pound back from Illinois. He's replaced Matt Suey. Thomas is a real armful. He gets that forward lean. Only 5'11", 235. Yeah, when healthy, he is a difficult man to bring down. Three carries, 20 yards. Bears trying to run that clock. It's down to 10.45 and running. Fourth quarter. Chicago 10, the Colts 3. It was tied at halftime 3-3. The Bears looking to go to 13-1 on the season. Walter Payton way under 100 yards going for a ninth consecutive 100-yard game. Takes it down and it looks like he has a first down for Chicago. Danelle Thompson was on the stop for Indianapolis. Nothing fancy about this. Just man-to-man -man blocking. Peyton has gotten, gotten his 61 yards very grudgingly against this Colt defense. Except that one big trap play, draw trap that went for the touchdown. He has been kept pretty much in check. That was a 16-yarder. Jim McMahon patiently moving his team down the field now in the fourth quarter. Peyton again. If it gets him, Walter Payton's to the 20-yard line, a gain of just three on the play. This is the 14th straight sellout at Soldier Field. The Colts have sold out Indianapolis ever since they've gone to the Hoosier right Dome. Pickett. Had 143,000 season ticket applications. I think there was a blind draw or a lottery for those people who got their season tickets. They could put 200,000 people a weekend in there. Second down now comes up for Chicago as the two wide receivers Marjoram and Golf go wide to the right. There's a big down as you see at Soldier Field. There's a bad only three winning seasons in the last 18. They're hungry in Chicago for a championship as Walter Payton is down inside to the 13 yard line. Cliff Odom again on the tackle. That guy just simply is not fool. Gets up, pats Walter on the helmet. Job well done. Statue of Liberty, the modern day Statue of Liberty run by the Chicago Bears. Odom right in the right place at the right time to make the tackle. Chicago Bears running that clock. A very controlled running offense now. A power game huddling at their leisure. Game clock down to 8.30 to play in the game. The Bears in the lead 10 to 3. He gets his yards, doesn't he? Every, every single game he gets his yards. He's now carried the ball for the last seven plays. There's one to go to Calvin Thomas. He has a first down for Chicago down to the 10 yard line. Straight ahead blast off football. The Bears just lining up and teeing off at the Colt defense. Running the clock in the ball as it's down to eight minutes to play now. Chicago leading 10 to 3. Mike Ditkin, the Bears looking to rebound from the disappointment at Miami. Twelve to ten now. The George Rogers has scored a 28-yard run for Washington, and Greg Bell is running eight yards for a touchdown for the Buffalo Bills. They're down to the Jets, 21 to seven in the third quarter. And the time of possession for the Bears in the second half of this game is going to be astounding. Yeah, they own the ball. And up to Peyton, he hits down inside the five-yard line. He's down to the three. And he always gets up. Once again, the offensive line will take the defensive lineman where they want to go. Peyton has to find his way through the hole. And the refrigerator <laughs> comes in in the backfield. The refrigerator, he opens his mouth and a light goes on. His younger brother, Daryl, when somebody asked him what you eat, what, what they ate with, with William around, he said, whatever he decided to leave us. He took him back out. What were you saying about him, Trump? He was born with a fork in his hand. And a smile on his face. William Perry of the Chicago Bears. 6.52 to go. Bears lead 10 to 3, and we'll be back right after this. It tells a big story about this big man. A 22-inch neck and a 52-inch waist. We saw him last uh, beginning of this year in Honolulu. He weighed 360. Yep. Still could put a pineapple on the crossbar of a goalpost. 10 feet up. He can go to 360 in a hurry, too. Chicago, second down and goal, goes to the run, and Calvin Thomas, pass in. 
His fourth touchdown of the year, and the Chicago Bears, with 6.49 to play in the game, open up a 16-3 lead. Oh, they have just owned the football in this second half. Colts just haven't had many offensive chances. That Colt offense will be rested when it takes the field. No question about it. This is a nice little play run. It's a tight end trap. Borch does a great job. Emory Moorhead does a great job. Gets Chris Scott out of there. Thomas in. Easy. Now the point after try by Kevin Butler. Bears have a 17 to 3 lead and they're ready to kick it back to Indianapolis. So Chicago got started slowly but now they open up in the second half and have a 14 point lead. Chicago Illinois the Bears looking to go 13 and 1 on the season and are a commanding position now leading the Colts 17 to 3 with 649 to play after the touchdown by big Calvin Thomas the Bears ready to kick it off. Everybody at NBC wants to extend their very best to Ken Harvey, one of our technicians hospitalized here in Chicago and wish Ken a very speedy recovery. As the Bears finally got going after being tied 3-3 at the half. Here's Kevin Butler into the ball. Albert Bentley over the shoulder. Bentley breaks it. Phillips finally gets him, but all the way out to the 49-yard line. So the Colts in good field position. They need some big plays in a hurry with 6.38 to play in the game. They're down 17 to 3. That last drive by the Chicago Bears, impressive. 10 plays, 45 yards, 5 minutes and 23 seconds. That's William Perry, 72. He ends up down here in a spot where he can cut off the, the tackler. He's not the uh, safety man. Phillips does an excellent job. William's not going get, to get down there first. Then he's not going to be last either because Butler doesn't run. Come on, William. First down, Hagel putting it up. Loser can't hold it at the 40 yard line. Good coverage on the play by Mike Richardson, the left side corner. Third year player from Arizona State. You could hear that ball bounce off the shoulder pads, the chest plate of Boozer. Look at that time of possession. Colts in the first half kept it even. In the second half, the Bears have absolutely dominated. Bears are the leaders, 17 to 3. Colts have won the last seven games against the Chicago Bears. The last meeting was in September of 83. Otis Wilson. He's down. No fumble. Mike Pagel, the Indianapolis quarterback, hit from the blind side. Buddy Ryan, defensive coordinator for Chicago, talks about the blitz being a loaded gun. They all know it's coming, but they don't know from where. First sack of the day for the Chicago Bears. And Wilson, a young man with great speed, it'll come from the left-hand side of your picture. See the game up front between Hartenstein and McMichael? Wilson untouched and is there to make the tackle. I wonder if he barks at him just before he hits him. They've been doing some of that. He says they've been doing some barking. Third down now and a ton. Third down and 20 for Indianapolis. Let's again. Wilson can run. Long ball. Capers is out there. He's going in. Wayne Capers takes it in for the Colts. And it's a 17 to 9 game against an all-out blitz. Mike Pagel, who was sacked from the blind side the previous play, gets a bad snap with one hand, outruns the blitz, and then loops one downfield to a wide-open Capers, a 61-yard scoring play for Indianapolis. Mike Richardson, the cornerback, broke the coverage. He thought Pagel was running. Not over yet. 5.57 to play in the game, and the Colts hit a big play. Capers had an 80-yard scoring play against Miami. Wayne Capers was originally a second-round draft choice out of Kansas of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Wade. Allegre hits the point after, and the Colts are back in it, trailing 17-10 with 5.57 to play. 
ball. Now Indianapolis will fight Trump to get the ball back. That was Capers' first catch of the day. Now you'll see on the roll, the blitz coming, Singletary up the middle. They pick it up pretty good. There's Otis Wilson. For some strange reason, Richardson drops his coverage. There you see 27. Capers keeps the pattern. And then it's a foot race at the end zone. He wins 61 yards later. And watch once again. We'll see when the coverage is dropped. Richardson's the man. Bagel's rolling. Richardson bites. And he takes a mouthful. It goes the distance. 61 yards. He's running for his life right here. Disaster into six points. Nothing to it, just the way we designed it. Yeah, catch that ball. Run in there, Wayne. All right, high five. There you go. Congratulations. Whoops. Just the way we drew it up. Nothing to it. Raul Allegre sitting up. He is an expert onside kicker. Whether or not they've called for that, the Bears think so. They have a hands team in, all skilled people. He loops the ball downfield this time. That's a called kick. Bears field it, though. Dennis Gentry takes it, and he'll be knocked down to the 30. Hope we're hoping to run people under it. So Chicago gets the ball with 5.49 to play, and the heavily favored Bears are holding now to a seven-point lead, 17 to 10. Remember the last time Chicago had the ball, they ran the clock, powering the football straight ahead, Peyton alternating with big fullback Calvin Thomas, who ultimately went in for the touchdown, and then the game seemed put away. It was 17 to 3. The Colts come back. Pagel having a good day, Trump. 11 of 23, 143 yards in that touchdown. McMahon, 10 of 22, 131 yards. No touchdown. Bears get set. Let's see if they come out running again on this series. Pitch back is to Peyton. So he blocks, but Walter goes down at the 30, gain no yard. Lost a half yard. Peyton still under 100. Our NBC statistician Ross Schneiderman totaling the Peyton yards as he moves on, hoping for a ninth consecutive 100-yard game. He'd break his own record. He's up to 76 now. 19 carries. He scored one touchdown. And you can see on the field there the little shadows that appeared about the numbers on either side. This field, as most AstroTurf fields where they just play football, is crowned. And Peyton slipped right at 50 to 10. Trumpy, you played for the Bengals. They have hit the half century mark. They didn't play like that when I played with the Bengals. Over Dallas. Oh! Anyway, the field is slick. That's the point of the thing. McMahon eludes the rush. Brings it out. Matt Suey takes it ahead. He has a first down for Chicago out to the 43 yard line. Brad White and Preston Davis ran him down, and the clock continues to tick. 13 yard gain. Good outlet job by Matt Suey and Jim McMahon. McMahon has looked downfield an awful lot when he's not been able to signal in the sideline. I want this play. Give me that play. When he's not been able to find the outlet receiver, he's run very well. This has not been a great game for Jim McMahon, but if they win, he'll take the score. And he'll be 25 and 4 at the starting quarterback. Yeah, not bad. The Bears are a bonanza at the box office, though. The biggest marquee attraction in the National Football League this year. Their television ratings are through the roof every time they play as Walter Payton runs the ball. Gets across to the 47-yard line. Chicago is always, of the major, major markets, the best market for sports from a television rating standpoint. They love these. When the Bears don't do well, they bust it loose in Chicago. Nice. Everybody watching. Now at 80 yards rushing and... I'll tell you one thing, when you're getting 15.5 million a team in television revenue, those ratings mean a lot. Chicago's overall revenue impact on the NFL is enormous. Is they really? affect the whole National Football League ratings are so high here in the third market in the country. Walter Payton gets some and then some more. He's down to the 40, and Waller's going to be close to 100. Let's get that striped shirt. Give him the credit on the tackle. 13-yard gain on the play. Ed Billick, Ed Linesman, will give him the tackle. He's all right. Walter's up to 93 in county with 21 carries. Big comes right at Ed Billick and Billick says, oh, no, what am I doing here? Drives him about three yards. Marks the ball, gets up, let's go. 
Jim McMahon now riding the crowd. Ken Tenter on the ball on the clock. With two power backs set behind him. Sue with the up back. Why are we going to Peyton? Looking for that century. Walter Peyton behind Sue. Looks ahead for about three. Down to the 37-yard line of Indianapolis. Brad White on the tackle. In speaking with members of the Chicago Bears PR staff, last time Walter Payton was ill was the week that he rushed for 275 yards against the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving Day. It makes no difference what he feels like. What he kind of a disease was that? I don't know. But whatever, uh, whenever he puts that uniform on, he can play. Watch the official once again, right at the right of your screen. Oh, no, what am I doing here? Well, I said there'd be days like this, but we'll give him an assist on the tackle, put him on the defensive chart. He'll be a hero in his hometown. He's fine. He's fine. Tough guy. Umpire's a tough job. He's the guy that stands in there with the linebackers looking at the quarterback from the other side. Ed Fiffick is the umpire. He's a gamer. Up and ready to go again. Those guys are in pretty good shape. Now, some of those guys are not the youngest people you'll find in the NFL, but these officials are in pretty good shape. Official rushing numbers for Walter Payton here, Trump, are 22 carries for 94 yards. That puts him at 1,400 yards for the season. And he's not looked good getting it today, right? They just keep hammering it at you. He's carried it four out of the last five plays in this drive. Bowl day is going to be a big day on NBC Sports. The Citrus Bowl will lead it off, and then come the New Year's Day Bowl games, the Fiesta Bowl at Tempe, Arizona, Michigan and Nebraska, the Rose Bowl. UCLA hooking up with Iowa, then the Orange Bowl, and all probability for the national championship, top-ranked Penn State against Oklahoma. Team to close its regular season with a very impressive show against SMU yesterday as Walter Payton goes ahead on second down and seven. He's down to the 33-yard line of Indianapolis. Rip Odom. Odom again on the tackle. They're going to mark a three there. A mark at four yards. So he's at 100 yards rushing again today. Green Bay now ahead of Miami, 24-20. Jets holding to a 14-point lead over the Bills at Buffalo. Miami be a game back of New England and Buck and the Jets at day's end if the Dolphins lose and the Jets and the Patriots win. Walter Payton down to the 29-yard line. He's got a first down for Chicago. Nine straight 100-yard days. Standing salute for Walter Payton. Packers at last count were up 24 to 20. That still has a ways to go at Green Bay, though. Walter. Bears would like to see him win some games and go to New Orleans. Walter Payton gets a couple of handshakes from officials. They realize the job well done. And Bears Jackson. really think they're going to play the Dolphins again. Oh, yeah. Well, I know one thing. When the playoffs open, I wouldn't want to have to come here to play Chicago on a January 4th or 5th day and win whistling in off the lake. It can be nasty here. There is no question about it. I was at the Bears last championship game in 63. Wrigley Field. It's never been colder in Chicago. I'd make Ever. that <laughs> What a thrill to be at that. First down and 10 as the Bears go to the run. And Walter Payton gets some more. he gets it the more he likes it and Walter Payton over 100 yards is down to the 20 with a nine yard gain. He's now rushed seven of the last eight plays for the Chicago Bears. Nothing seems to wear this guy out. There's nothing he seems to enjoy more than carrying the ball 20 or 25 times in a football game against anybody. Colts still fighting though. They use a timeout to stop the clock and we'll be back. Now for the power computer. Back at Soldier Field in Chicago. The Bears holding to a 17 to 10 lead over a young Colt team that came in as a three touchdown underdog. That's fucked from the beginning. 
Now the Bears are running the ball in the clock. As again, they go to the run, and it appears to have enough for a first down, certainly close to it, on a second down and two run. John, you mentioned you wouldn't want to come in here in the middle of January and play a football game against the Bears. The temperature in Chicago averages on January 5th anywhere from a plus 30 to a minus 15. Those are the records on those days and given years. And for the NFC Championship game, which would be a week later, I think on the 12th, it's uh, 29 degrees as a high and minus 13 degrees as a low. But the thing is, you're talking temperatures. We are not talking chill factor. Oh, I know, I know. We are talking wind here, Soldier Field. We are talking about the hawk. The hawk. Yeah. If Lou Rawls sings about the almighty hawk that hits Chicago. Matter of fact, if they, when they play the playoff games here, maybe Lou Rawls ought to sing the national anthem. He made the hawk famous, didn't he? I know you don't want to play a trumpet on those days. <laughs> no, no. You don't want to be dancing around out there in leotards either. You don't be dancing around out there in leotards either. St. Louis leading now Kansas City has opened up a 38 to 10 lead over Atlanta. We'll see Kansas City next Saturday on NBC Sports going against the Broncos at Denver. Most of you will see the Raiders and the Broncos this afternoon as part of our NBC Sports doubleheader. Browns go to Seattle. When you remember at the end of the first half we were commenting that the Colts had outrushed the Chicago Bears. Well. Here are the total numbers today rushing for Chicago. 187 for Indianapolis, 100. Kenneth Edmondson, our producer today for NBC Sports, Andy Rosenberg, our director. We also thank John Englert and Tom Valdeseri as we come down the stretch at Soldier Field. 24 seconds to go. The Bears going 13 and 1. I'll tell you one thing, next Saturday they've got a problem on their hands. They're going to play a tough club. The Jets on the Jets home field. That'll be a good football game. And by the way, this completes the first undefeated, untied home schedule for the Chicago Bears since being 6-0 in 1956 in Wrigley Field. I'll tell you one thing, you've got to take your hat off to the Indianapolis Colts. They played. They showed their stuff for four quarters. They're young and they're going to get a lot better. That'll do it in Chicago. 17 to 10, the Bears win it. They go to 13 and 1. Jim McMahon back at the helm and back as a winning quarterback. The Bears now 13 and 1 on the year for Bob Trumpy. This is Don Cricky. Glad you could be with us at Soldier Field and reminding you it's a big doubleheader day on NBC Sports. Most of you will see the Broncos and the Raiders at the